Welcome to the Boxing Life Podcast with me, Tony Jeffries. On today's episode, we've got Ryan Munsey. Ryan is our nutrition expert. He's a very smart guy. We've just been standing there talking to you, and I, I can't believe, I couldn't, couldn't understand half the stuff you were saying. It was like Chinese to me. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, how's it going, mate? It's going well. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. Looking forward Good. to this. Thank you for coming on. And alongside me, I've got Glenn, Mr. Six Figures Homes. Glenn, how's it going? I've had a rough morning. I, uh, I slept in and then let in the sun for a little bit, did a bit of work on the laptop. Sounds terrible. It was tough, yeah. <laughs> a rough morning for Glen Holmes, that's what it sounds like. And now I've got to do this, so. <laughs> so Ryan, uh, for people who don't know you, can you tell me a bit about yourself? Sure, um, I'll try to make this as, as brief as possible so we can get to all the good stuff. Um, I am the chief optimizer at Natural Stacks, host of the Optimal Performance Podcast, and uh, I've got a degree in food science and human nutrition. I was lucky enough to get to go to Clemson University. My best friend there was on the track team. So not only did I get the, uh, the education side from uh, you know, the, the nutrition stuff, but I got to train firsthand with uh, guys who are now in the NFL and you know, ran sprints in the Olympics. So you know, that's where I really learned nice. the performance training side of things. Uh, but also, you know, that was my first glimpse into, you know, what we now call biohacking, where it's, okay, I can change the way I eat, I can change the way I train, manipulate those variables and get the output that I want, uh, whether it's, you know, increasing muscle mass or decreasing fat, increasing speed, you know, all of that stuff. So I really fell in love with it there. Um, got into the bodybuilding side of things, started competing. Uh, that led to a modeling contract. When I graduated from Clemson, I moved to New York City, was a fitness and fashion model for a year. Uh, and then that's where I started uh, helping other people, helping other models up there with nutrition, working as a personal trainer. Uh, moved back to Virginia. Um, you know, modeling just wasn't the way I wanted to, to spend that period of my life. Um, and uh, when I got back to Virginia, started House of Strength, uh, which was a performance training facility right. in Roanoke. Um, so, you know, I had to fully immerse myself into everything that you guys talk about, you know, on the podcast with, you know, when you become a gym owner, it's not just how do I train people? It's no longer sets and reps. Yeah. You know, you got to clean the bathrooms. You got to do the marketing. You've got to do, you just have to learn so much. And that's really where I fell in love with, you know, this whole idea of uh, accelerated learning and listening to podcasts and, you know, biohacking and nootropics. And you know, how can I learn as much as possible, develop my skill set to be, the best entrepreneur and businessman that I can be, but also to be the best coach that I can be for, you know, my members, you know, the yeah. more I upgrade that skill set, the more I can help them, the more I can provide for them. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, like I said, I started listening to podcasts. I said, I want to do this myself. Um, I started a podcast for the gym, House of Strength podcast, and ended up, I stopped doing it for the same reason that you said, Tony, you know, it, it's so involved. It takes you yeah. away from the gym. And I, I wasn't monetizing it and it was, it was affecting the bottom line of the gym. And you know, life's not about money, but if you run a business, you have people that, that work there and rely on that. You know, you've, you've got to keep your eye, you know, you have to stay you know, uh, front sight focused, as Mark Devine would say. And um, you know, so I, I dropped that. I told the guys at Natural Stacks I was you know, stopping my podcast. And at the time, I was, uh, we were a wholesaler for Natural Stacks and Bulletproof. And then uh, you know, they said, hey, come run our podcast, the Optimal Performance Podcast. Wife finished residency. We moved from Roanoke to Virginia Beach. Uh, I knew that was coming up, so I phased out of the gym, sold that, closed it, um, and, and moved in full-time with Natural Stacks and was able to transfer those skills that I developed running my own business to you know, be an, an asset and add value to what Natural Stacks was trying to do. Um, and you know, moved in full-time there. And now I get to do, uh, I, I've, you know, Alex, uh, my, our cameraman and, and I have been out here for a week, uh, not even a week, but four or five days recording podcasts, hanging out with people like you and getting to do experiences like this. And it's, you know, you just pinch yourself. Is this real cool. life? You nice. know, like, do I get to, do I really get to learn how to box from an Olympic medalist? And do I really get to interview all these other people? And, and you know, it's all in the name of, you know, collecting information and right. sharing it with other people and, right. and helping other people because, you know, that's, I guess circling all the way back to, you know, my first experience at Clemson was, you know, that's that's where I became obsessed with human potential and human performance. And, you know, you just want to, the more you go down that rabbit hole, the more you learn, the more you want yeah, people to be yeah. able to experience it and optimize, you know, what they're trying to do and, and live, 
you know, the most amazing life that they can live. From <laughs> everything you've just said there, we can go down so many routes with this podcast. Right. He's done so the, much, the right? F- the first question I want to ask, well, when did Natural Stacks start? So the company was founded in late 2013. Okay. Uh, I'm not one of the co-founders. Um, you know, I, I am lucky enough now to be a, a partner and a co-owner, but uh, I joined um, you know, early 2015. Right. And just in a nutshell, how would you um, assess or sum up uh, Natural Stacks as a company? What do they do? What do they offer? Yeah, so we are very focused on brain health and optimization. Uh, We are leading the charge in what we call open source uh, supplementation, open source initiative. Uh, So the idea there in a nutshell is sort of like the farm to table movement with food. You know, that's what we're really trying to bring to supplements where we want to know, you know, we, we hate seeing supplements that have a proprietary blend where as a consumer, you look at this thing and uh, if you're not familiar with a proprietary blend, uh, you know, Glenn and I could come up with uh, super creatine 10,000, right? And all that that label has to say is that there's 10,000 milligrams of our creatine blend in this supplement. Mm. Now, we can list the components of that blend as, you know, creatine and ash and, you know, uh, cigarette butts and you know whatever else. Not not that the ingredients are that shady, but with within that ten thousand milligrams, we only have to put we could put as little as one milligram of creatine in there, and we're still we're technically not lying on the label because all we've said is that the total of that complex right. is ten thousand milligrams. So you know anytime we see uh, a proprietary blend, it's kind of like a red flag because it's like if you went to a, if you went to a restaurant and they're not openly advertising, hey, this is grass-fed beef from XYZ Farm, you know, that's obviously a selling point if you have it. So if you have that, you're going you're gonna to market it right. that way. You're going to use that as a selling point. So for us, you know, as a consumer, when we see, all right, this company's not really being totally open or, or forthright. Uh, so, so we started Natural Stacks. Or, uh, the idea is to provide supplements that are the highest quality, the highest in possible ingredient quality, uh, open source. So if you look at any of our products, you'll see um, the exact ingredients and the exact amounts that's in there. Uh, and, and that's not something that, that a lot of companies are doing. And then on top of that, we're doing independent third-party testing, not just taking the manufacturer's word that the formulation, the, the final product, is what is on the label. So then those are going to be on the website. Um, that's the, the deadline for that was supposed to be April 1st. I'm not sure when this is going to air or, or when we're going to have that out, but it, but it is coming very soon. That's the open source initiative, um, you know, so that we want consumers to be able to say, all right, look, I, tr- I can trust this company now uh, yeah. because, you know, not only are they tell me what's in it on the label, but I can go on their website. I can click on the certificate of authenticity. I can see, you know, trace this ingredient back to this manufacturer and this supplier and know exactly where it came from and how it got here and what's going into my that's body. That's really good. So you see, that's what you're trying to get with all supplement companies to do that? Or Eventually, you, yes. They should do that, really. That's, right? that's like phase two or phase three of this open source initiative is, you know, once once consumers see that, like, hey, this is a thing, now well, it's not good enough for just one company to do it. I want to know this from yeah. every company. But I think once one company start to up their game on that stuff, the rest kind of are forced to follow suit a little bit. I feel like Should within, be, within, 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 the, within the last couple of years, that's definitely become the trend is like yeah. people are paying higher prices for higher quality supplements. Right. They're not just getting, you know, just a bog standard supplement. I mean, I got, speaking from my own experience, five years ago, my supplements were just like the cheapest one I could find from vitamin shop, right? right, right. Now I'm more invested and more knowledgeable about supplements and what goes in them and what they should be mixed with and all that kind of stuff. I'm ha- ha- happier to pay a higher price for higher quality. Yeah, I knowing think that it's not a proprietary blend, it's got the stamps and seals and all that kind of stuff. You know, pay more attention to the quality of it a lot more than I used to. And I think the in supplement industry in general is going in that direction. Just because you have a stamp that says paleo certified or keto friendly doesn't mean that it's not a proprietary blend. Okay. Uh, so I think you know, before I, I when I was in school, I actually changed my majors. My first major was packaging science, and then when I changed, it was food science and human nutrition. But in packaging science, we learned that you know, basically, and anybody who's studied marketing, you guys probably know this from what you've had to learn marketing the gym. You know, the front of the package is designed to sell, uh, but as a consumer, just go straight to the ingredients, read the ingredients, look at the nutrition label, and you know, don't worry. If you're educated and, and you know what to look for, you can read the ingredients and decide for yourself, well, is this really paleo certified or is it is it, you know, paleo friendly, keto friendly, whatever. But 
you can still have a proprietary blend and get that stamp. But I think to, to the first part of what you said, it, there's, there's kind of a, a two-sided answer to that. You know, from, from the business side of natural stacks, you know, from a business side, you know, we want to challenge other companies who may or may not be seen as competitors to you know, hold that standard, if you will. Uh, from a personal side, as a consumer, I'm with you. I would like to think that you know, a rising tide floats every ship, right? So if this movement happens and everybody gets on board, then that's only good for all of us. You know, um, so I don't I, think that that will happen though, because the cheaper companies are not going to want to do that. The ones right. that's in mm. there, there are there, and that's the problem with the supplement industry. And that's that's our yeah. bigger mission as a company is right. to defeat that stigma, to to change the stereotype, um, because that, I mean that is a real thing. There are so many supplement companies getting popped by the FDA for you know there's protein powders that uh, they got caught. Uh, I forget the name of the company. It, it, you know they had. I think it was 18,000% more sugar in their blueberry wow. pie protein shake than what was on the label. Wow. And the protein content was only like 20%. Wow. Which you know, company was that? I don't remember the name, but I can find the article. I'll, I'll right send now. it to you guys. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, it's terrible. And, and so this is what's going on. You know, and you know, that's, that's even, they, they may not have had a proprietary blend. They just, they just didn't meet the label claims. And right. because the FDA doesn't regulate supplements the same way you know, they regulate food, some of that stuff can sneak by and, and get into consumers' hands. So we're really trying to change. And I think consumers are aware of that. And that's why people sometimes are leery of supplements in the supplement industry. And we really want to change that because, you know, we do believe that supplements, the right supplements used the right way can accelerate, you know, learning and performance and, and recovery. Uh, it's not something that's going to do the work for you. But, yeah. but, and I think that speaks to the way we look at supplements too, is, you know, it's, it's something that fills in the gaps. So your podcast, Optimal Performance, uh, what would you say is optimal performance? Oh man. Yeah, that's a great question. How would you define optimal yeah. performance? Yeah, what is optimal performance? If you so had to say. Yeah, so I, I think uh, that's a great question. So I think it's whatever your pursuit is. And I think we, we have, we get to have such a wide variety of guests on our show. We've had people who've climbed Mount Everest. We've had, uh, we're about to have an Olympic boxer. Uh, we've had other Olympic athletes. Um, you know, we've had uh, uh, CEOs and Navy SEALs. And you know, these are, I, I list those as examples because it's a different domain, but each of those people in order to succeed has to be able to perform at their peak, that optimal performance. And, and I think to me, if I had to, to distill that down, it's just, it's being able to, uh, you know, fulfill that, that human potential and being able to, you know, whatever it is, whether it's, whether it's speed or, or focus, you know, if you're, if you're going to win the World Series of Poker, you know, obviously fo uh, focus is an attribute that helps you more than, you know, if you're an Olympic volleyball player and you need speed or quickness. But yeah. it's being able to, uh, to see that in advance uh, of the event, being able to plan for it, train for it, recover, uh, and and lay that foundation so that when the time comes to perform, you have the skill set, you have the assets, you have the things in your back pocket to to pull them out and be able to succeed when the lights are the brightest. And I, th I think relating that to general population as well, just av average everyday person who's working a nine to five job as well, no matter what they're doing, if they're getting up doing it to the best of their ability, and like you said, pinpointing the attributes that they need to to do whatever they do on a daily basis. Right. Do it find that attribute get the maximum of, from of that attribute put it into practice and then maintain that on a daily basis yeah absolutely and keep that consistency going yeah and and i think you know when when we talk to a lot of different entrepreneurs or people who own their own business i think sometimes there's there's like a a, a connotation that just because somebody works a 9 to 5 that they don't maybe need optimal performance but i mean there's so many people that that are in that world and there's no reason that, that that's not somebody that doesn't want to be happy or doesn't want to be able to provide for their family to their utmost ability. And, you know, we have a lot of customers who are, you know, nine to fivers or, yeah. you know, maybe they own their own business, but, you know, they sit in front of a computer all day long. Right. I know, like, since I've sold the gym, you know, I, I for, for eight years, I was on my feet and lifting weights and racking and unracking and walking. And, you know, now I'm, I'm sitting at a computer so much more. And I, I saw a picture of myself the other day and I'm like so pale because I'm never outside <laughs> anymore. And, um, you know, that's part of, uh, of optimizing, you know, hormones and, and neurotransmitters is making sure blood levels of vitamin D are where we want them. So, you know, I need to get outside more. I need to, 
uh, if I can't, or if I live at a high latitude or really low latitude, the farther we are f from the equator, the more we need to supplement with things like vitamin D. And, you know, we know that affects happiness and hormones. And yeah. th th there's a whole rabbit hole we can go down there. But, you know, you're right. Like, it, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be a Navy SEAL or an Olympic athlete to pursue optimal performance. Oh, definitely, yeah. I just think most people would, would you break it right down to the very basics. Most people just want a good night's sleep, right? And just wake up feeling yeah, you want, not you, groggy. <laughs> yeah, you want to you wake up and, and be happy and, and feel great and be ready to kick ass and have fun and, and live a, you know, a, a great life. Yeah. As well, I wouldn't see you need supplements to have optimal performance, would you? I would say no, you don't have to. But it helps. <laughs> if, 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 if the only I think if the core things are in place, like your diet's healthy, your sleep is good, you're ex exercising regularly, you're hydrated, optimally hydrated the majority of the time. I think depending on what you're doing, I think for most people that should be enough. I think for the people that are busier, higher strung, have got more tasks to perform, more physical yeah, things to be. I think I think supplements can start to play a role. Training for the Olympics and competing in the Olympics, I never had any supplements. Yeah. Oh, I tell a lie, we had some uh, recovery drink that put, helped put the salts in your body after you've sweated because you're training so much. Right. Yeah. But we never had anything to enhance our performance, anything like that. Protein. Training, training for the protein Olympics, no proteins, nothing. nothing like that. We just ate good yeah. and trained hard right. and, and that was really it. I think, you know, a lot of people make the mistake of looking at supplements as, you know, the thing that's going to, they're, they're definitely marketed that way if you pick up like mm. fitness magazines. I mean, fitness magazines are, they're, they're not, they're not paid for by subscriptions anymore. Right. You know, the, the way those magazines stay afloat is by advertising dollars. So of course you're going to have marketing for supplements and it's going to be positioned as, you know, hey, take this protein and your bench press is going to go up X number of pounds in six weeks. But so, so following that logic, you know, that's that's making the mistake of thinking that supplements are basically going to be the engine of the car. You know, if you stick with that analogy, you know, if you don't have wheels on a car, if you don't have engine in it, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. You know, the supplements are the nice rims, the the spoiler, the things that, okay, this thing, it went from good to great or it went from great to untouchable. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's kind of as a broad look at supplements but you know you, it would be nice to think that we could get everything we need from our diets today but yeah. even if you ate perfectly you know, we have the issue of the fact that most foods are grown so fast today to provide for uh, the massive amount of demand that we have even if it's organic even if it's in you know soil that isn't uh, depleted of the right nutrients you know if the nutrients aren't in the soil to begin with it's not going to get into the foods that you're eating uh, if you're deficient you know if you're if you're eating foods that no longer have the same magnesium content that they did 50 or 100 years ago because our soil quality is now low because of farming practices of monocultures uh, instead of polycultures and you know so soil quality is down magnesium and other vitamins and minerals are not not as high uh, in in our foods as they used to be, if you're deficient in magnesium, you may not absorb the B vitamins from the meats that you eat. So there, there is this aspect of, you know, even if I get everything right, you know, the environment isn't. Uh, and 21st century lifestyle as well. Yeah, add that in as, as a factor. Most people are sedentary right. on their laptops, watching oh. TVs till midnight. Yeah, I mean, even getting sleep, like, I waking mean, I just, up straight onto their phones. Yeah. You know. Bluetooth signals going into their brains overnight, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and, and that's something we, we've talked a lot about that on our show. I mean, you, there's so many issues you just highlighted there. You know, you, okay, we can look at the postural uh, aspect of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how you sit, how you stand. We know posture uh, can, within two minutes, holding up what's called a power pose can increase testosterone 20%. It can reduce cortisol just by holding a power pose. Uh, Amy Cuddy uh, was the person who, she did a study on this and uh, she did a TED talk on it. Um, so we know that posture can change uh, hormones and physiology. We know, you know, you mentioned, so that most people are sitting hunched over. Yeah. So not only is it changing physiology and hormones in an acute setting, but you're, you're changing your musculoskeletal system and, and structure uh, on a chronic setting. You add a phone to that. We spend so much time looking at screens. We absorb blue light through our eyes. That's yeah. going to affect circadian rhythm. It's going to affect um, uh, the, you know, the amount of sleep that we get because, uh, and even the quality of sleep because you won't start producing melatonin yeah. uh, as soon 
um, when you've been exposed to blue light after the sun goes down. Uh, there's the EMF and radiations from phones and, and holding them up to our brains. So right. There's a it's lot of endless, things. right? Yeah. And yeah. it's like as soon as you mentioned the word posture, the first thing I did was like this. Like, <laughs> yeah, I saw both of you guys. Crack <laughs> my back, like straight away just to blue. Yeah. Uh, but the, the, and the, you've seen the diagram, you know, like the evolutionary diagram from like apes to man. Yeah. And it like goes to a, a guy standing upright and then now it's like coming back around to this and then it's like this. Yeah. Fawn neck. Yeah. Like we're going to be there in like the next hundred years. Like what do you think of melatonin? As a supplement? Yeah. So, because uh, I've been taking it and I'm a little bit worried. Mm. Yeah. Don't, so don't need it. <laughs> don't need it. Yeah. So it's the short answer is it, I don't think it's a long term solution. It because so here's what happens uh, when you take melatonin, you're 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 initiating that serotonin pathway, um, kind of in the middle. You're skipping steps in the in that bios the natural biosynthesis. Right. So uh, we have uh, a line of products called uh, brain food products, and we're looking at four main neurotransmitters, uh, serotonin, dopamine, GABA, and acetylcholine. Um, serotonin, um, our serotonin brain food product, e so each of those brain foods is associated with one of those neurotransmitters. So on the serotonin brain food product, we actually start with L-tryptophan, um, and that's because that's, that's the... If you look at it from a science standpoint and you're looking at how that synthesis occurs, that's the first substrate in the process. So we provide the, the vitamins, the minerals, the precursors um, that go from start to finish. So you're, you're providing what your body needs and allowing it to assimilate on its own and go down that pathway. You're not forcing anything. So in our minds, it's better to provide the natural things, let the body do what it wants to and make what it needs as opposed to jumping in in the middle and forcing something. Because that can manipulate your own, me your natural production yeah, of melatonin. Yeah, I guess that, and that's, um, that's what I'm worried about, because I am uh, work 100 miles an hour and I'm non-stop, my mind never switches off. And last year I was drinking a lot, I was, I was having a bottle of wine before I went to bed, <laughs> and I would switch off, switch my mind off, and it would be fucking great. Yeah. sleep like a baby. Mm. So and now I can't do that. So now I've took this melatonin a few, so and it's like it's, a, it's, a, it's the same can benefits. I, can I can I suggest what I I'd, I'd say what I suggest for you, and then you can tell me okay. if you think that'd be a good suggestion or not. Okay. I think it'd be a good way to do it. So if the first thing I'd suggest would be doing uh, tryptophan. So uh, five HTP, right? Is so we would actually we would actually start with L tryptophan, right? And then the next step in the body is to take that into 5-HTP. Okay. So even if you took 5-HTP, you're you're still skipping that first step. Right. Okay. So so tryptophan, um, uh, L-theanine, mm -hmm. magnesium, and maybe like a, a relaxer, like a valerian root or a passion flower. Fucking hell, I'd, I mean, I'd I'd see three drops of melatonin better than all that shit. Yeah, but like he said, like he said, those <laughs> so are the things that are gonna produce. I, I get it. Yeah, you want to think melatonin naturally. You want to think long term. You want to think sustainable, right. right? So, so yeah, me melatonin may be faster and it may be easier tonight. Yeah, and I might sleep like a baby. But the problem with melatonin a as a daily thing is that you're gonna run into this issue of your body's gonna become dependent on it. Yeah, and you're gonna downregulate that natural process. So, you know, what Glenn said is good. Um, what you were saying about the alcohol is actually telling me, uh, and, and, and even what you said before that about you're always on the go, you're go, go, yeah. go. And, and in today's world, there, I just read a study where uh, in 2007, and we're now in 2017, so, you, so whatever these numbers are, are going to be exponentially higher yeah. now. But in 2007, the average person consumed, I think it was 174 newspapers worth of information a day and those newspapers were 85 page newspapers wow so whatever 85 times 174 is right. that's how much information we're taking in on a day um, and producing six newspapers worth of information and in 1986 we were only producing two and a half pages Bloody of information hell. so we're, we're taking in so much more information today through text and facebook and and social media and all this stuff um, because again, I mean, think about, I mean, there was no Instagram, there was no Snapchat yeah. in 2007. Um, and because we're doing that, uh, th we talk about these neurotransmitters, GABA is the inhibitory neurotransmitter. Its role is to balance all that excitability with our neurotransmitters. So, uh, alcohol is a GABA agonist, meaning that it binds to GABA receptors and mimics the action of GABA. 
So the reason that people like to take one or two alcoholic drinks to help wind down is that you're, you're stimulating that GABA receptor and it's helping right. you shut down, calm down, relax, produce those calming theta waves, which L-theanine is known to do. So that, that's a great one to throw in there. Um, point being that, you know, instead of the alcohol, which again may not be, it might work tonight, it might work fast, but it may not be the most sustainable, long-term, healthy solution. So what would you say of GABA? Yeah, GABA. And of course, I'm going to say natural stacks, GABA <laughs> brain food. But, but yeah, that's, that is what, that's, that's the, I don't want to call it deficiency, but like you, 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 you kind of inherently knew like, okay, I'm overstimulated. I need something yeah. to wind down and calm down. So uh, when I talk to, to people, I, d I never want to seem like I'm hawking supplements. So, and on our podcast, we talk about lifestyle habits and, and traits. So I always look at things in, in two, um, two planes, I guess. So you're, you're looking at uh, traits and states. Traits would be like long-term characteristics. Uh, states would be the here and the now, a short-term transient thing. So uh, we want to look at lifestyle practices that can help us unwind and, and calm down, quiet our mind, you know, things meditation. like yoga, <laughs> meditation, yeah. breathing. You know, those would be things that you could do, um, if not nightly, every other night during the week to help with that. But then, you know, if you need a little bit more, uh, like let's say, all right, I did my breath work, I did my meditation, but I'm still having a hard time unwinding. You know, that's when you can say, all right, well, my st I need I need a little bit of help for this state right now. So let's go gab a brain food, relax, right. unwind, get a great night's yeah, sleep. Yeah, I think uh, a big one is, and I started doing it, but then I stopped again. Is switching the phone off at like seven o'clock at night because the phone's a big stimulant, right, mm -hmm. on the social media and on text messages and this and that. I've, I'm sure that. I, and I'm, well, I'm, not, I'm not the only only one doing this. I think this is becoming more and more common. And now you said about that information that we've taken in, mm -hmm. that'll be that's kind of why. Yeah, it's shit for me though because when I get out of the gym at nine o'clock and I got to text you about something, it doesn't get delivered. <laughs> so I'm like, shit. I got to wait till tomorrow to get it done though. I did. I did the exact same thing when I used to run my gym. I told all my guys, I'm like, you know, look, eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night, like whatever that was. It's like I, I turn my air, my phone goes on airplane mode and it doesn't come back on until the next morning. Yeah, so yeah. you know, if you need me. Uh, yeah, you know, let me know. But at the same time as well, I love having my phone on, and I enjoy on the social media. I enjoy texting people about work, and I enjoy mm. seeing what's going on. You know, so I love doing it, but I know it's bad for me and my family. Yeah, and and that's I was gonna say. Like I know you you said you know you've got a wife, you got two two daughters, yeah. and you know I think part of balancing all this, you know, you you're you guys are you're killing it in the business side, but part of uh, life and, and longevity again is is balancing you know work play family mm. um, you know all that stuff so I think uh, we had this conversation on one of our shows yesterday wherever you are whatever you're doing be fully present in that thing yeah you know if I'm here with you guys and we're recording this I'm not thinking about uh, you know videos that we have to shoot later today or, or you know I love my wife but I'm not thinking about her right when I'm at home you know when you go home you, you want to set boundaries and, and say, all right, I'm so that drive home from the gym to home, you kind of shut off all the stuff from the gym and the business stuff. And then when you're home, phone goes on airplane mode and you're present with yeah. daughters and wife. It's and interesting you mentioned the driving because we've talked about that before. Yeah. I have like a 20 minute drive to my house from the it's gym. It's a great buffer. And this is a lot shorter. Yeah. He's right down the street. And I always say like that drive home for me is like good wind down time it's like good a long time and it's it's like you said it's a perfect yeah intermediate between the hustle and bustle of the gym that energy and that crazy energy of the gym and then it's like get in the car you can wind down and then by the time i get home it's like you're kind of halfway there already from that 20 minutes of driving or whatever half an hour of driving yeah since we've moved uh i'm actually working at home and you know a lot of times uh, i will work until my wife comes home and then you know so she has that drive as a buffer and, and a lot of times when she comes home i have to say you know okay hey you're home Hi, I love you. I've got to go for a walk for five minutes. Yeah, to have that buffer clear yeah. my head. Otherwise, like, I just I, I hit her with everything that's in my head and all that chaos of the day. And you know, there's always all these projects. And yeah. It, so it, it's that's a big deal. That's a good way to do it. Like go for a walk. That's what I should start doing. I like that. I've I've really had to look hard at you know that's something I've had to concentrate on and and like that's like it it won't happen unless you put the energy yeah. and effort into. How old are you? Happen. Thirty three. 33. Yeah. Looked good, didn't he? <laughs> he was a fitness model. 
It's all it's, 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 it's all the <laughs> optimal performance and optimizing and, yeah. and uh, longevity, biohacking, and uh, all that stuff. Tell me about biohacking. What is biohacking? So I, I think uh, it's, it's, it's... Make it simple. It, exactly yeah. what we were talking about, I think, right? As far as the sleep stuff, that's yeah, a so perfect example. Of it. It's, it's a, it is. That's, that's like... I guess biohacking is another way of saying like... Uh, uh, so, I, I, all right. If, if you're a hacker, like if you if you watch a movie and there's like a hacker scene, right? It, it's the guy who sees control of a computer system, right? That's we're, we're really familiar with that as the hacker. But a hacker is anybody who seizes control of a system. Right. Bio is 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 the prefix for biology. So so we're seizing control. We're taking control of our own biology, mm -hmm. and we're going to manipulate the inputs. Um, whether through addition or subtraction. So if we subtract blue light, if we subtract EMFs, we get a more favorable um, environment within our body. So we get better sleep. We get uh, fewer you know, disruptions uh, in our electrical magnetic system from you know, EMFs, which you know, make our mitochondria function better and increase our energy. And, um, so, so I think biohacking, the way I define it, is you know, manipulating those inputs so that we get the outputs that we want yeah. that, that set us up to be at our best. Wh whether so it's whether it's waking up with more energy or, you know, being f being able to be fully present. Yeah. You know, like I, I, I went through a few specific things this morning before we got here because I knew that I needed my brain and my body to be prepared for, you know, a lesson with Tony. Uh, I knew I was going to do something that was way outside my comfort zone. So how do I, you know, calm my nervous system so that I can receive this information and, and assimilate it as quickly as possible? I wish my clients would take that attitude. <laughs> like a, a, a lot of them, some do, some are really good, but some are like it's it's tough because show, oh, I'm tired. and we we <laughs> talked about this. You know that uh, most clients come into. I mean, my facility was was similar to this. You know, we didn't have the, quite the emphasis on boxing, but when you do group stuff, the most people come in and, and their number one goal is what I called the workout effect. You know, you, and I think, Tony, you said this earlier. You said there were, was it three or four? Yeah, the, the, the top three things you said before about the number one reason to come in for a good workout. Mm. Number two is to have fun and enjoy it to come back. And number three is to learn to box. Yeah. That's, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Like yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's like to you, you started this because you have a passion for boxing. Right. You know, I started my place because I have a passion for, for strength. And, you know, as coaches, you know, we like to, we can get hung up on sets and reps or technique or like right. the science of that number three. Yeah. And yeah. it's easy to forget about like th one. that your client is most focused on number one. Yeah. Um, right. So that, that, that's a good point. Um, but no, I, I think I, I went off on a tangent. So biohacking, I, I think, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. It's uh, a polarizing uh, word because I think people outside that community, hear it as people looking for shortcuts. Yeah. Te technically, yeah. having a cup of coffee is biohacking, really. Right. To wake yourself up coffee. in the morning, having a cup of coffee, that's biohacking. We, we learned this yesterday uh, with Lacey Mackey uh, from Caveman Coffee. Coffee is the number two commodity in the world behind oil. Whoa. Wow. So that's in insane. And in the biohacking and nootropic space, we always say, like, caffeine is the number one used nootropic. So everybody's like, oh, I'm scared of that word. I don't know what nootropics are. I don't want to play with my brain. But if you've used ca caffeine or, or had a cup of coffee, you know what it feels like to kind of switch on your brain yeah. and go from one state to another. The, d the difference between, because the definition of nootropics is always that it's not altered state of awareness inducing, yeah, all right? So it, it, it's non-stimulant. Is that, is that right? You Am can right have some that? that are stimulants. Okay. Like, I mean, coffee has caffeine, so that's a stimulant. Um, but it's not classed as a nootropic. It is. Oh, it is? It is. Okay. Um, I, I think... It depends on who you ask, but I mean, it, it certainly is. Right. Um, so, so I think to us, you know, cognitive enhancement or, or, or no, a nootropic is anything that provides cognitive enhancement. Okay. Whether noticeable or not, right? Because I always uh, interpreted an, a nootropic as something that wasn't stimulant or give you an altered state of awareness. That's how I used to. Well, so I think it. There, there are. It's a spectrum, right? So I mean, like even even within one compound of okay so we i think we could all agree that psilocybin is um uh, gonna alter states right uh, if, if you take a psychedelic dose you're in an altered state mm. but you can microdose it and you're not in a psychedelic state but you are in a state that is somewhere on the spectrum of between normal and 
seeing weird shit and right. not being able to function. Yeah. Um, there's a great book called Stealing Fire. Uh, Stephen Kotler and Jamie Wheel just wrote it. It came out a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and they talk at length about, you know, the people who are changing the world right now are like, uh, basically they say in the book, you know, the Google execs are microdosing on LSD to get a oh. different perspective and be able to, so I think it was Einstein that said, you can't solve a problem uh, with the same mindset that got you there, right? It, it, so if you can pull back out, you know, whether, right, and look, I, I mean, let's, let's have an adult conversation. I mean, there's a lot of people using cannabis. There's a lot of people using, um, you know, like uh, you've got some friends uh, that, that use a lot of ayahuasca. Um, anything that you can do to, to yeah. kind of change your perspective, if it's from a problem solving standpoint, um, you know, obviously you're not going to drink ayahuasca and show up to your cubicle and, and uh, try yeah. to be focused and, and do uh, spreadsheet data yeah. input, right? So it's, it's what's the right tool for this job? What am I trying to accomplish? What do I need to do? And if you, if you educate yourself on, you know, all the different nootropics that are out there, it's, you know, that's equipping yourself with, I'm sure you guys talk about this from a boxing standpoint or being a business owner or, or in the strength coaching world, it's how big is your toolbox? What tools are, are at your uh, disposal? Do you know how to use them uh, and how to implement them for, for the right purpose? Yeah. Uh, and nootropics are the same way. I mean, you know, it, it could be as simple as just waking up and needing a cup of coffee to, you know, enjoy a Sunday morning with your family. Or, you know, maybe you're trying to solve, you know, how do we get to Mars and, you know, deal with energy crisis and, you know, you need to, so with, 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 with biohacking, is there anything that you could do for when you feel down? Do you ever feel down? I do. Um, Tyrosine. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of smiling. This, I, th that was, that's a really important thing to me because I don't feel like people talk about that enough. Right. I feel like if we live in this highlight real world in social media. And, yeah. you know, you see, right. like, and don't no get one, me wrong. No one like, posts, like anything negative do they but i don't want to see on that facebook either. it's no. like the best of the, uh, the best of i don't the, know i, I would say facebook there's a lot of negativity really? a lot of opinion yeah, there is. uh really? whereas I, like i'm on, not on facebook as like much in, but, instagram yeah. you see a lot more like positivity and yeah. stories and stuff so i don't get me wrong i don't want to get on social media and hear you bitching about your right. shit yeah, no. we all have shit like no, none of us are perfect let's don't pretend to be perfect but as part of not pretending to be perfect i think it's okay to have the conversations of you know i'll be perfectly honest i mean we we came to la we flew out here on Wednesday, and we're recording this on Sunday. We'll fly home on Monday. Uh, we've literally had zero downtime, and every single minute has been spent with an amazing person doing an amazing thing. And I'm going to go home, and, you know, on Wednesday, my wife's going to be at work, and I'm going to be in my home office, and it's just going to be me. It's not going to be the same right. as being here talking to, you know, high performers and yeah. talking about creative stuff. And you, know, you do have to find a way to balance the highs and the lows. Um, and, and we had this conversation on, on our podcast yesterday, and, and I, it was so cool because um, this is not to try to name drop. You guys will, if, if you listen to our show, you'll hear it. It's with Tate Fletcher. And yeah, Tate's going to come on. It's, it, it's, yeah. it's really cool to, I, I wanted to have it with him because he's talked about it before. But me sitting next to him, I feel more comfortable talking about that topic just because of who he is and right. how he looks, but um, it, it, it was fun to explore that. And, and yeah, like, so, so on a down day, I think it's, to answer your question, you have to, you have to, you, you can't beat yourself up for having a down day. Yeah. You have to kind of accept it is what it is. Uh, some people like to be a little over analytical and it, I think that just is dependent upon your nature. You know, are you gonna be the guy who has to figure out why you feel this way? And if you are, okay, explore that. Um, I found for me, that only makes me more anxious about it. I think for me, it's just, okay, accept it. It's not gonna be um, the greatest day. It's not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, uh, it's not, I'm not gonna be a world beater today, right? But one of the things when I first started my gym, I had a mentor who taught us this approach called move the chains. And it's a football, American football analogy. You know, you get four plays to gain a first down. And if you gain 3.3 yards per play, then, you know, by the time it's fourth down, it's like, you know, fourth and 0.1 yards. And if you gain 3.3 yards again, you, you never have to punt. You never, 
uh, don't get a first down, right? So it's you're talking to Englishmen. We don't understand. <laughs> <that>. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I was thinking about so, that. Like, what? So, so the point <laughs> the point of that is like not to always look for the hail mary, not to always think that yeah. every single play is going to be a touchdown, but it's like it's put your head down, do the hard work. Um, you know, realize that those days are just kind of part of the process. You know, and, and Tony, you and I were talking about this a little bit uh, earlier where, you know, anytime you have an opportunity to perform, whether it was you on the Olympic stage or you in the actual professional fight or our Navy SEAL, uh, you know, actually in combat on a mission, you know, their ability to succeed in that moment is solely dependent upon being prepared for that. And that preparation usually is what you have to do on those like down days. And I think it's it's being able to fall in love with the process and realize that, okay, you know, I'm, I'm not a 10 out of 10 today. Not every day is going to be a 10 out of 10, but wherever I am, I have a responsibility to myself, to my family, to, you know, my, my coworkers and, and everybody who's dependent upon me to show up. And you know, I think that's part of just being a professional, whatever right. you do, like, you have, a ro you have a role, you have a job to do. Like show well, up, be a pro, get it done. The answer is no. There's no biohack on really. I, I, I like well, tyrosine, I, I, and that's one I'm thing. I'm thinking, have you got a I drug where I can just pop? Does it a a a amino acid L tyrosine? You well, make me feel. Yeah, I mean, what do you, what so, do you think so I think, uh, I mean, our, our dopamine brain food um, is, uh, it has phenylalanine in it, and yeah. it does, it, it goes down that pathway of. Um, uh, dopamine brain food is, uh, it contains phenylalanine, so it goes down that dopamine pathway, uh, and it does provide mental drive and motivation. Would you do that? Yeah. You do? Yeah. And, and I do, and, and I, I, was, I was just, again, like, I'm hyper aware of being, like, a supplement hawker, yeah. so I'm trying to give you, like... Not for this shit, uh, I want supplements. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's funny. Do it's dopamine funny. brain food, and, and it, it, it's motivation and drive. Yeah. I, I, had, I had a uh, rough couple of days towards the end of last week and come out of it not very motivated at the start of the week, not as motivated as in, and after it as I usually am. And when I feel like that every now and again, I, I usually uh, grab some L-tyrosine and that tends to work for me. There's a, a book called The Power of Now. Are you familiar with that? I am. And I never read it. I listened, I listened to an audio book on it, a, a bit of it, and it, that really helped, like pulling yourself out of your body and, and looking from the outside mm -hmm. and looking about like, looking how successful you are or, or what you're doing and how things could be worse. And it's easy know, to get caught up in it all, right? It is, a, it really is. Because, uh, you know, you if I rever reversed like four years ago, five years ago when I retired from boxing, and yeah. I thought in five years' time, you be doing I'm going to be where I am now. Yeah. Like, Fuck, that's going to be the best thing ever. Right. You're never going to have a down day. We said this what about money as well because I remember a while ago, I think if someone had said to me five, six years ago, you'd be earning this much a week, I'd be like, Wow, I'm gonna be like right. flying, and then, but it, it it's a case of when th the more money you earn, the more money you spend, you increase the standard of your living. So that stress never really goes away because the more money you earn, you up the standard of everything. Right. Mm -hmm. But you're still in that same spot you were when you, when you weren't earning that amount right. of money. When you were earning a third of that, you still <laughs> yeah. like were at the same. Sp you know what I mean? It, everything kind of lifts up, right? And you keep striving for more and more and more. So y it's hard to be able to just accept what you've got and just be like, okay, yeah. I'm just gonna. I'm not take rich, right but I, I know I know that now. Like, I'm, I guess I'm not I'm not rich, but I'm doing all right. But I know that money's not the answer to happiness. Yeah, no, no, thought, def definitely you know? not. But yeah. that, I think that's just. An, I just gave money as an example because, like, you, what you were saying, if someone right. said to you five years ago, you'd have these two gyms and you'd be doing this, you'd be like, whoa, that's amazing. Yeah. But because you're in it every day and, and you're striving for the next bit of success and you're trying to build and grow and grow all the time and you're ambitious, yeah. you don't settle, then y it's hard to step back and look at it all and be like, okay, I'm good with this. So since you want some biohacks for down days, yeah. uh, you know, a biohack doesn't have to be a supplement. It doesn't have to be a pill. It can be anything. So, so uh, you talk about the power of now. A couple of things that that we talk about as biohacks. You know, uh, cold water, cold exposure is something great, and and that will totally put you into really? the power of now. So, just if if you're feeling down, if you're feeling not motivated, just put yourself in a cold shower. Mm. Just make yourself nice. do it. That, all that these that things. That reminds me of something. Else. Do you remember when we did the plunge pool in in? Uh, yeah. Was it in Vegas? In we Vegas. Plunge pool. So I, I felt amazing after that. Yeah, right. so you, you get a norepinephrine hit, yeah. but but there's also that psychological thing of like, okay, I just made myself uh, 
I, I voluntarily did something that was uncomfortable and it builds momentum. Uh, you know, you, you, you get these little victories and you just build momentum. It's like, okay, let me do one thing. I'm going to take a cold shower. Okay. Yeah. Now I got this hit. I got, I got up some rolling. Uh, I'm going to do the, I'm going to, I'm just going to do one thing on my to-do list. And then you do that. And then that inevitably leads to accomplishing three or four or five things. And then you're like, well, shit, it's 12 o'clock. I don't feel great today, but I just got a lot of stuff done. Uh, let me kick it and just take three hours off and, you know, get my mind yeah. right. I'll come back. I'll do another three or four hours of, of stuff. And by the end of the day, you're like, well, I actually got a whole day's worth of, of work done. I got more done than most people would have gotten done in a day, yeah. even though it wasn't like a great day. That's cool. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, dopamine, if you want the, the supplement, you know, dopamine brain food would be a supplement answer. But I think do things that make you uncomfortable, uh, cold showers, uh, you know, inversion, hang upside down, go for a walk. You know, we know motion changes our uh uh, emotion it changes our physiology, so go for a walk. Uh, just just do some push-ups, get outside, get in uh, the sunlight. That's yeah. why working out probably considered like a great stress reliever, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, I think you know it's not it's not something like you you, you couldn't lean on that and do it every day for that purpose. Yeah, um, yeah. I think just that, like when I, I think back to a couple of times where just on a Saturday night, late night, I've just been kind of demotivated or feeling down or whatever, and I'll drive to the gym run and do like 40 minutes and just hitting the heavy bag and moving around and getting a sweat and you come out of it. I'm like, oh, I feel you completely, you feel completely different. Right. Switch, so yeah. And that's like motion really does change hormones. It changes neurotransmitters. It changes our physiology. I think yeah. what you said there about going for a walk, that's kind of underrated. Well, I was in France. It was before the Olympics. I, I was I had a fight, uh, the Irish guy, but I just fought and I got picked up a little injury and I didn't want to fight. I had to fight again the next day in the semifinals. I know it was in the finals against Kenny Egan, the guy who eventually beat me in the Olympics, but this is in the European Union tournament. And I was in the room and I didn't want to fight the next day. I was like, I'm not fighting. And the, when a sports psychologist came into the room and he looked around and I had the curtains closed, those clothes and shit everywhere all over the floor. And Tony come for a little walk with us. I was like, no, so I'm not fighting. I'm not fighting tomorrow. I didn't want to fight. Uh, so he come for a little walk. So I went for a little walk out in the sun around the running track in the fresh air and he never said things to us to get us to fight, but just he, he spoke to us a little bit, but just getting out there mm. and walking around, he said, Tony, I had to get you out of that room. Mm. You're sitting in a dark, messy room, and that's mentally, that's really bad for you. Mm. Yep. You get out in the open air. Yep. And that was, I guess, that's biohacking, right? Yeah, you know, it is. Your, it is. It absolutely mind. is. And I think that's that's part of where, like, this, this stereotype or this, like, the, the, the people in the biohacking world love that word. And the people outside of the biohacking world, I don't know if there's like the negative connotation or the stereotype of looking for shortcuts or, or if it's just a word that's like, I don't even know what that means. So I don't want to go down that road. I, I know, think people are scared of people with without a base level of knowledge on this stuff. Find it like a scary term. I if mean, I talk to my yeah. family back home, for example, yeah, whose they're, nutritional they're knowledge is like zero. Yeah, if you say like, oh, you can just or you can just take this, you can take some magnesium before you say, oh, I'm not taking that. Like that's no, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. Like they see supplements as like drugs or something. It's like, or like if they t taking something to enhance something or make something better, they they just see it as like drugs. It's like no, it's not. <laughs> I think that speaks to you know that. The, what we were saying earlier about the supplement industry, I think there is a lot of uh, reluctancy to trust companies and, and products and stuff. And yeah. that's why it's so important to us to, you know, break that um, cycle. Mm. So for optimal performance, uh, what would you, if so, someone, uh, someone who doesn't really work out, who's just nine to five job, do you want to uh, optimize the performance? What would you, what one thing would you say to them to do it? One thing. Oh. Big, um, big question. Or maybe top three or something. Yeah, or top three. Yeah. Top three, if that's it. If that's we it. could do yeah. top three and then narrow it down to the number one. That's that's the question I ask every guest on our show. The last question they have to answer the top three tips to live optimal. Right. Um, yeah, so I, I think, you know, f for somebody who's working nine to five, um, I'm going to assume that that's like inside sitting down. So if there's one thing they could do, it would be walk outside yeah. daily. Um, you know, because we know... We know the, the negative impact that fluorescent light has. We know the negative impact of sitting for eight hours a day. Uh, we know what happens when you're in this environment that's, you know, you're constantly being bombarded with radiation and Wi-Fi and 
all these signals and you know, just go outside even take your shoes off and walk you know barefoot with your feet on the real earth not concrete or asphalt like yeah. dirt grass sand whatever you have um, and, and just walk for 20 or 30 minutes a day in the sunlight that will change so many things and and it's i mean you could do that on your lunch break you don't have to really change your your routine or your habit i think that's a natural urge too or it is it is for me i don't know if it is for everybody but i feel like it it, it would be for everybody it's like when i'm in a indoors or a confined space for a long time even just a, a couple of hours three two or three hours I'm like, oh i gotta get out of here it's like yeah. i just want to get outside get some fresh air or just got just move just move that urge to move is just innate for me yeah. like i mean think about if you went to a conference and it was like the the premier speakers in the entire world about the one thing that you were most passionate about even if you sat in that room you know, for three or four speakers in a row, three or four hours, like if you get a break, you're going to want to walk outside. You're going to want to see the sunlight. You're going to want to stretch and kind yeah. of open up and expand. And, and it, that's exactly what you're saying. It's just, that's this innate thing. Like but as do you humans, think, do, you, do you think it is innate though? Or do you think it comes down to the fact that I am more concerned about my health and my well being than maybe the next guy who's really settled into that nine to five lifestyle and really doesn't give a shit if he gets some sunlight in that daytime. Well, He's I, more concerned about just getting that work done on the computer or just eating a donut or getting a coffee delivered. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not saying it is it to be disrespectful to anybody, but I'm saying there's a ton of people out there that don't even think about mm -hmm. their health right. as the priority and their, their priority is Gratific instant gratification, whatever it might be. So they're quite happy to just sit in a chair well, this from, question from is 9 till 5. For Instant gratification by optimal performance if you go outside and walk, right? That's yeah. Well, well, yeah, but but I mean, I'm I'm arguing that like I'm using that conference as an example to say even somebody who's not aware that that's why they're doing it, I I think if like let's let's say that like my dad was with me, right, and you know we had these three or four speakers in a row or whatever, like my I, I would think that my dad would be like, all right, I need to take a break. I'm gonna go outside and right. just get fresh air. Yeah. You know, I think a lot like that, that might be the, the statement that a lot of people make is like clear your head or get fresh air. And that's why I'm saying I think it's it's an it's an innate or primal kind yeah. of urge to get real light, get out of that dark, confined, yeah. Yeah, uh, I heavily agree. populated I space. Yeah, and they're not necessarily doing it from a, a conscious decision of, mm -hmm. OK, what's the healthiest thing I can do right now? It's just that's just what they're what urge they do. Is. Right. Yeah. 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 So that's number one. OK, so that's number one. Number two would be sleep. Uh, I, I hate it when guests come on and say that for us because um, I think it's it's so like so many guests do say it. But, man, it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, it really does. Uh, we, we've you know, like I said, we've been on this whirlwind uh, every day for the last four or five days. And fortunately, we've gotten at least eight hours of sleep every single night. And it's the right. only way that I've been able to recover from one day to the next and be able to perform you know, anywhere close to, you know, the level that I want to be at. Yeah. Um, it, it, and anybody who's, you know, if, if you've been jet lagged, if you've taken a red eye flight, if you have a kid and you haven't slept through the night, you know how diminished your, all of your facilities are right. if you don't get a good night's sleep. Yeah. yeah. We've had a bit, a bit of a disagreement. We had a big a disagreement. Bit of a, so we were talking about, um, we were talking about people who start their own business. And I said, you're going to have to sacrifice sleep to get, to, to, to work a business, you've worked, owned a gym before, so you know you're there at 6 o'clock in the morning, there at 10, 12 o'clock at night, so you're not getting your 8 hours sleep, you might get 5 hours sleep, 4 hours sleep, and you're going to work your ass off. So that's what we were talking about before, where, you know, you, you, I, th I feel like you had to... You I said you would sacrifice sleep for success. 100%, and I and still, I, I, I still and I, say that. And I said that success is difficult if you take the route of sacrificing no, I sleep. Ag I agree, it's difficult, but if... You're more if, likely if, to be if successful if, if you don't sacrifice sleep, I think. No, I'm I'm saying if you've got if you've got to be up there at six o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, four o'clock yeah. in the morning to to work mm -hmm. rather than I think sleep. It, it, I think it depends on what stage you're at. Not a lot not because long term. Uh, like me right. me personally That's like the in the beginning, yeah. I used to I used to have to get up like five thirty in the morning, do clients at six AM, do a class at seven AM and, and, and I'd be there that. right through and till if nine. You've never done that. I wouldn't, wouldn't have got where I, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So you agree with me? I agree so with I you in the right beginning. I think I think it depends <laughs> what stage you're at. Like now, I don't. No, I, th I, I you guys are saying the, the same thing, but in a different way. Yeah. Like yeah. You, you have to in the short term. You're going to have to work. 
you're going to have to do, if you want something that, you know, everybody else wants, like you're going to have to do things that, that they're not willing to do, right? right? Exactly, and, yeah. And if it's business related, you've got to put in, uh, you, look, you can't run a gym and not have a 5 or 6 a.m. class. Right. So somebody's got to be here and yeah. coach it. Yeah, somebody's yeah. got to get up early and do it. And until you find the right guy that you can trust to do it, that's going to be you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, if, you, if that means you have to build it, then you've got to do that. And if you're not willing to do it, good luck finding somebody else who is. Like, yeah. if, if, no one's going to buy into your vision if you're yeah. not willing to do that stuff. Yeah, I agree. So, so you do have to sacrifice it short term, but it can't be a long term thing. Right. And I mean, I knew like if I had to get up at 4 a.m. to coach the 5 a.m. class, I did my best to get, I, I know going to sleep at eight is not realistic, you know, the night before to get eight hours. Yeah, but, but I'm trying to go to bed <laughs> as early as I can, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so number three? Diet. Uh, I mean, that's that's always been my passion. That's my degree. And, and the more we learn about it, the more we know, uh, you know, food impacts us uh, instantly uh, on an acute level, but also on a chronic level. Um, you know, and, and if there's one statement that I could make that gets somebody 90 percent of the way there, it, it would be from Jack LaLanne, uh, like the original fitness guru. Uh, he said, if man made it, don't eat it. And I think if you just follow that, like I said, you'll be 90% of the way there. Right. We can overcomplicate food so much. We could talk for, you know, there's, I mean, how many diet nutrition books are, yeah. are out there? Like, I think it's one of those things where there's so much, we don't lack the information. Right. There, there's not a person on this planet that couldn't, well, uh, that's not true. There's probably some people that couldn't access those books, but most people listening to this show have access to all the information that they need. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just a matter of, you know, finding the right diet that works for you, you know, experiment with it. And yeah, I like that because I was going to say with, with diet, I struggle with my diet now because I, I dieted for 17 years of boxer and then now because you had to diet. And then when, when you, when I retired from boxing, now it's like, I don't have to diet. So now shit, I'll eat, I'll eat twice as much. So I eat everything I can. So now I struggle, struggle. And I, and I know, like you said, I know what diet I should be doing, but it's just the willpower. Do you think the biohack willpower? <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, I, I mean, there there's certainly ways to do that, um, and I think it's you know there are ways to structure your diet. There are ways to uh, it's different for everybody. I mean, I, I think yeah. you and I could sit down. We could do you know like I could do a nutrition consultation with you, and I could figure out like you know where your uh, where your cravings come from, why they're coming, and you know we could you know set things up to make sure that those cravings are reduced in both in terms of intensity and frequency. And I guess if you want to call that biohacking your diet, it would yeah. be, you know, and, and, and there's ways to do this through whether it's intermittent fasting or, uh, you know, carb cycling or ketogenic diet or paleo diet. And, and yeah, like How that. can you do that with, if you were cravings, like uh, let's say I'm craving potato chips. Right. How, how can you? That's so, salt yeah. cravings so, is so a, the, the like immediate thing is, is yeah, right? sodium and, and electrolyte imbalance. And I mean, if you're, if you're inside all day um, and you're sweating a lot, then, you know, you would be a prime candidate for not, uh, having uh, you know balanced electrolytes, so that that would make perfect sense to me. So you would give me some electrolytes in a different way to that, and that would stop the cravings. So so one of the things that I do, and this is I guess this is a biohack. The first thing I drink every morning when I'm at home is uh, a glass of warm water with a table. Why warm? I've heard that before. Yeah. So warm opens up your digestive tract. If you immediately drink cold water, everything clenches up and tightens up. Right. So the warm water is to facilitate uh, digestion and, and a nice early morning bowel movement. But uh, you add a tablespoon of organic lemon juice or half the juice of half an or of an organic lemon. And the lemon is going to uh, increase bile production, helps with fat metabolism, uh, protects your liver, detoxification. Uh, I do a tablespoon of raw apple cider vinegar, and I do cayenne pepper, and uh, the whole reason that this started was I, I do a teaspoon of sea salt. Um, so when you first wake up in the morning, your body has to upregulate blood pressure so that you can like stand mm. without falling over. Um, anybody, like if you've ever laid down or sat down, you stand up too fast and you feel like you're going to pass right. out, like that's a blood pressure thing. So in the morning, our body has to, uh, it, uh, we, we use cortisol to scavenge sodium, uh, to upregulate that blood pressure. Right. So if you ingest like, uh, 
like the best form of sea salt. Whether there's whether the, we could argue whether that's pink Himalayan sea salt or Celtic sea salt, but the point is it, it's a salt that has other minerals in it. Uh, but you're providing that sodium so your body doesn't have to use cortisol to scavenge for it, which protects your adrenals. You're also remineralizing your body uh, and, and getting that electrolyte balance more. In what favor. does the vinegar do? Because I've heard that before. Man, raw apple cider vinegar is one of those things that, uh, depending on who you ask, it, it cures cancer and, and everything else. And I don't, I, that's an exaggeration. Right. I don't know if there's actually evidence of that, but it, it, um, it definitely assists with carbohydrate metabolism and blood sugar regulation. Um, it, it helps with, uh, it's got uh, acetic acid and um, I think it was 30 milliliters of raw apple cider vinegar is a high enough dose to help induce ketosis. Uh, so it does pr uh, promote fat for fuel. Right. Um, it has a it, digestive uh, yeah. properties too. Yeah, it, oh. if, if, to get that, you, and, and to get all these benefits, it has to be raw. And a lot of times just look at the label and it should say with the mother. And if you look, like if you look through the glass jar, it should be cloudy. You should see sediment, not the stuff that's like right. crystal clear and has been pasteurized. So tell me that drink again, it's warm water. A teaspoon of sea salt, a tablespoon each of the vinegar, uh, apple cider vinegar, and uh, organic lemon juice, and a dash of cayenne pepper. Uh, you could add turmeric to that too. Um, some people do. I don't. Uh, we had this conversation yeah. earlier. Uh, right. Yeah, I'm going to start doing that. And you think you'll find benefits straight away. Yeah. Right. Yeah, most people, it, look, I don't drink it for the taste. Let's right. get that out there. Like um, but I, every time I drink it, I immediately feel better. Right. Um, and you know, just it, it's just become a part of my morning routine. For I've been doing that for six or seven years. Right. And then, what's your diet like as well? Is that good? Yeah, uh, I'm I'm probably the pickiest eater that most people uh, run into. Um, I'm incredibly particular about uh, you know everything I eat is organic, grass fed, wild caught. Um, I all the expensive stuff, right? Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, I, I I'm one of those people that I believe in taking care of myself and. You know, it's you know the saying of pay now or pay later uh, yeah, with yeah. medical bills or whatever. Um, but uh, I actually, I practice what's called intermittent fasting um, when I'm at home. We, uh, we actually spoke about this on a podcast last week with the guys from Mind Pump about okay. theories on frequency of fasting. I, yeah. I just wanted to see what your thoughts are on that. Because I've heard a couple of schools have thought about it being monthly, bi-weekly, you know, even longer than that. So I think opinions are changing on this. Yeah. Now. So there's a lot of research that says uh, like a five day fast every quarter or you five know, full days, five fasting? full days every wow. quarter. Um, wow. Like so four times a year or yeah. you could do uh, like one day, one 24 hour period where you don't eat every month. Yeah. Um, that I seems to be the most common approach. Right? Yeah, I think that's that's like the least uh, objectionable or the least disruptive to mm -hmm. your life. So what I'm talking about, I guess in Somebody actually suggested to me recently, instead of calling it intermittent fasting, it's intermittent eating, um, mm. where you know the the original, uh, whether it was lean gains or or something like that, but it's a 16-8 format where you have an eight-hour eating window each day and then a 16-hour fast. So let's say you started eating at noon, you stopped eating at 8 p.m. That's a tw that's an eight-hour window, and then you'd have 16 hours from 8 p.m. to the following day at noon. At noon right. Okay, so you know, you, you would eat 100% of your day's uh, food in that window. Yeah. Um, for me, I just, that just kind of evolved into one meal a day. Uh, I just, I, I don't, uh, the idea of eating like a tiny meal, just, it just aggravates me and angers I, me. I like guess I, it I depends on your goals too, right? And your well, it's, it's highly lifestyle. individual. I, I don't, I don't recommend, like when I coach with, with clients for nutrition, I never recommend that right off the bat. If people want to work towards it or if they want to do it, fine. Um, and I say like when I'm at home, like when I'm traveling like this, I, I don't always do that. So I actually had a little bit of food, uh, before we trained cause I did not want to come in here and like pass out on Tony. <laughs> um, but, uh, but you know, so that like, if I don't eat one meal, I eat two meals and I try to eat them in as tight of a window as possible so that my fasting period or window is as long as possible. Right. Um, so if you guys talked about that, I'm sure you, you've already heard like the benefits of, of fasting and, you know, mental clarity and longevity and body composition right. and all that stuff. Yeah, definitely. The, the, the thing I struggle to get my head around with fasting, it's probably m more of an old school mentality, is just m metabolism slowing down 
and body going into starvation mode and retaining fat stores that that predominates my thoughts when I think of fasting that's why I, and that's one of the reasons I'm hesitant to do it and the other reason I'm hesitant to do it is purely because I'm so active on a daily basis I right. need I need the energy to be able to do my job I'm doing six seven sessions a day or whatever and I'm was going through thousands of calories. Right. I don't think fasting would be a good option for me, but if you can s- suggest something to take my head out of that, the yeah. first point yeah. on fasting, so I'd be wh- way more inclined to get on board with it when my schedule permits me to do it. Yeah, so one of the mistakes that I see a lot with intermittent fasting is people struggle or fail to consume enough calories in that window. Yeah. Now, I mean, I've just, like I said, I've, I've, I just, I've always had a big appetite. I like to eat big meals. Uh, if I'm going to eat, I want it to count. I want to enjoy it. I want to walk away feeling satisfied. I don't have a problem eating a day's worth of food in one sitting. Some people do. Um, so, you know, to your point of not getting enough calories because you're active, um, if you get enough in one sitting, so it's it almost like you've matter. got to prep for the fast, right? So if I if I did well, if I wanted to do like a twenty four hour fast once a month. The leading up to that fast, I'd have to really up the calories. No, that's that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, I, I think you're talking about like a fast on one day and then going back to an eating normally, right? Yeah, just a complete so, twenty four hour fast. Right, but so for me, eating normally is like I only eat one meal a day. Yeah, and I don't eat that again until the next day at that time. So right. technically, I'm fasting for twenty or twenty four hours. Yeah, every single day on the calendar. Right, right. You do that now? Yeah, you only eat one meal a day. Well, like I said, it, with, with the exception yeah. of like today, like I had a, uh, we started at 10, I ate something at 9. So what would your meal be? Um, so on a, on a sh- heavy strength day, uh, I experimented last year with going straight ketosis. And uh, so that would have been like protein and, and fats and yeah. vegetables. Um, I found that I lost a lot of top end strength. My one rep max went down about 20 to 25% over a 12 month period. Wow. So, you know, to me, that's not really acceptable. I kind of use uh, one rep max and strength as like my true north. That's like my compass point. I know as long as that's going up, everything else is going to go where I want it to go. Yeah. Um, so now on those, uh, I have two strength days a week, one up or one lower on those days. I'll have a small snack, uh, around 11 AM maybe 11 or 12 a.m. Uh, noon, and that's about 30 to 40 grams of protein and about 30 to 40 grams of fat. Um, so, like, that used to be six whole eggs and some sauerkraut, yeah. right? Like, that's just, that was really easy for me. And then I would go train about an hour later, and then after that, it would be um, somewhere around 200 grams of carbohydrates and about 100 grams of protein and maybe another 30 to 40 grams of fat. So uh, for the day, I'm looking at around 150 to uh, 160 grams of protein, about 200 grams of carbs, and like 60 to 90 grams. So of two fat. meals a day. That's on a lift day because oh. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't like to train heavy fasted. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've just found that I'm stronger uh, in the afternoon with a meal. And again, right. this this is all found through experimentation. You know, it's you know my approach to all this has been you know, learn the science and then. You know, if you understand the science, you can bend and manipulate the rules to favor you uh, for whenever and however optimal performance, you know, is, you know, uh, however you define it or need it, right? So on a day where I'm not training that way, and that's only two days a week, so the other five days a week, somewhere between noon and 4 p.m., I don't get hung up on what time it is. Um, It's just when I feel like, okay, I can't function at my peak anymore without eating, I'm going to eat, and then I back to, you know, I got shit to do. I, I don't want to spend, I don't want to stop what I'm doing, especially running the business. This was huge for me because right. uh, you guys know if you're back to back to back to back to sessions, um, you know, I, I don't have time to stop and eat six times a day or, you know, and I've tried six meals, three meals, nine meals. I've tried them all and this is just the one that works for me. So, but the one meal would be, uh, it, I would have as low carbs on those days as possible, uh, somewhere around 200 to 250 grams of fat and the protein would stay constant. Are you not starving at bedtime? Mm-mm. No? Well, remember, I ate a day's worth of food. But still, you just get hungry, right? I, not I with that amount of fat in your bloodstream, I don't so think. So I think it's, again, this is just, it's individual. I'm not, right. like, you're asking me what I do. Um, I, I think for some people, you know, if, if you're interested in it, start with the 16-8, you know? So, so make your eating window, instead of one meal, 
make it an eight hour I- eating window from noon to 8 p.m. Right. You know, so you have your first meal at noon, have another meal at like three or 4 p.m. and then have another meal at seven or 8 p.m. And then all those concerns that, that you both voice are, uh, are taken care of. You know, you're getting food throughout the day. Yeah. You're getting food late in the day so you're not hungry at night. Uh, and, and see if you experience the the mental focus and clarity in the morning from skipping breakfast. Right. The other thing, you know, a lot of people who have eaten breakfast their whole life, um, you know, they're like, well, I don't know if I could function in the morning without getting up and eating something. So it's not, don't think of, you don't have to start at that eating window of 12 to 8. Just the, the easiest way to get started is to just push your first meal back an hour. Right. And then two hours, and then three hours. Yeah, gradually. And then just gradually yeah, work yeah. towards that. And that's the, a piece of advice I always give with clients looking to drop carbohydrate intake right. and trying to get their carbohydrates right down for, for uh, fat loss. It, they're like, I'm like, what do you eat? And they're like, oh, and it's just carbs, 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 carbs. I'm like, well, okay, we, you, you can't tomorrow just start going complete carb free your body's just gonna like freak out right. so it's the same sort of concept i'm like okay so try and cut them off after 6 p.m yeah. and then give that a couple of weeks and then start bringing that down to 4 p.m and then give that a couple of weeks and then bring it back to 2 p.m and keep chipping away at the carb intake until you get to the point where maybe only your breakfast is carbs and then you can start experimenting with a carb free breakfast and then fasting and, and so on and so forth it's like you said it's building up that yeah, and I, that's exactly. such a great approach to any pursuit that we have in life. I think it's it's human nature to say, okay, I know I'm here, I want to be here, and and we forget that like there's so many steps. You know, you, yeah. you didn't you didn't just overnight become an Olympic boxer. You know, right. I didn't overnight you know get to where I am in terms of diet. You know, I've been doing this for ten or twelve years. So it's like I look back at the way I ate when I first started eating healthy, yeah. and I laugh at what I thought was healthy. Because now you couldn't pay me to eat that way. (laughs) But at the time, it was better than what I was doing. Right. So it's, you know, we, no matter what our pursuit is, whether it's weight loss or, or, you know, changing the carbs in our diet or whatever, you you focus on progress, not perfection. And, and I think it's just human nature to, to look at that from a perfection standpoint, you know, how do I get to where I want to be? And, um, just, it's a great way to sum it up, progress, not perfection. Just take baby steps, make sure that every single day is, you know, you did one thing each day, you know, to move your mission forward. You got a little bit better every single day. And, uh, you know, over time, you just, you become a better version of yourself right. in, in all these different domains in which you're, you know, applying that. Yeah, I like that. And I think that's a great way to, to end this. Uh, great chat. Yeah, it's it been is. great. Ryan, I really appreciate you coming on. And next time you're in LA, come down and we'll do it all again. Uh, for people who want to, find out more about you i'll find you or find your company yeah can you give us some social media sure so uh all the natural stacks uh social media facebook twitter instagram is all at natural stacks and for me personally it's at ryan muncie underscore on instagram me and glenn were looking on your website last night well not together we were texting about it and i'm very Im- impressed with your website i think it's really good the natural stacks site no, or your r- first one. Yeah, right. That, that's about to get redone, though. Uh, uh, no, I like the, I like the format of it, and I like the, uh, the the way it is. One thing I didn't really like was how, but for me personally, is how much it's like. Give me your email. Give me your email. Give me your email. Right. But I bet you get loads of emails for that. We were talking <laughs> yeah. about that, right? No, no. So I, again, that's going to be redone. I think when we had that, when I had that done, it was it was a few years ago, and I was still more in the fitness space. Right. Uh, where now it, it's more in the um, writing, speaking, um, you know. So, so we need to we need to rebrand that a little bit. Right. And uh, I think I have two or three different email capture things running. Yeah. And and I've actually most of what I'm doing now with blogging and writing is going through the Natural Stacks page. Okay. So my site has been neglected a little bit. Right. And but it's got lots of information on it. I, th- I thought it was solid. Yeah. yeah there's simple. There's a right. lot of blogs mm-hmm. on there. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, and thank you for listening. If you want to follow us on Instagram, this is at Boxing Life, and make sure you subscribe. So, Glenn said, if you so if you leave a what was it? If you leave a five uh, star I- review, iTunes iTunes review, uh, I, iTunes re- review, he's going to give you a free personal training session to the best review that's left. Talking about Glenn, and uh, Glenn charges like through the roof for his personal training session. So, make sure you leave a five star review on iTunes and come and. Get a workout with the man himself. Yeah, if you like the podcast and you're in, you enjoying them, 
the best way for us to grow this and build it is for through iTunes reviews. That's going to help our ratings and our visibility and all that kind of stuff. So really appreciate it. if you took a couple of minutes, just go on iTunes, leave a review, and then best one, you can come over to the gym and we'll do some boxing. And if you're from England, Glenn's even going to pay, pay for your flight and your hotel. <laughs> 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 all right, see you later. See ya. Thanks, guys.